and come to your mat. Feet hip width apart or maybe a little bit wider. And lift and roll your shoulders and this opens the gateway, the pathways to the head. Stand with your feet hip width apart and then breathing in, raise your arms. You can keep them bent if that's good for you or keep them on your waist, but if you're okay, reverse your hands and bring your hands up to the ceiling. Breathe out, gently come to one side and bounce slightly in and out to keep it dynamic. Breathe into the centre, stretch up and breathe out to the other side, bouncing slightly in and out. Come to the centre, breathe out, turn slightly to the side, come to the centre and then breathe out, turn slightly to the other side and come to the centre. Lower your hands to shoulder height and keep a bend in your arms if you need to. Breathing out, turn and look beyond the third fingers of one hand. Come to the centre and breathing out, turn and look beyond the third fingers of the other hand. Come to the centre. Place your hands on your waist. Lift and roll your shoulders, just place them comfortably on your waist. And so we come to the neck as you breathe out and turn to look beyond one shoulder as little or as much as you would like. Come to the centre and breathing out, turn and look beyond the other shoulder and come to the centre. So testing our balance, this is optional. Just lift your heels and uh, see how your balance is today. You can always lower your heels to a millimetre off the ground and then lower your heels. And then carry on as you just bend your knees bottom away from you and you'll feel your abdominal control coming or switching on. Press your feet into the ground and come up to standing. And then lift and roll your shoulders and clasping your hands behind you, aim your knuckles to the ground. So this opens you at the shoulder level and breathing out, turn to one side. Come to the centre and breathing out, turn to the other side and come to the centre. Release your hands, lift and roll your shoulders and then slide your hands down your legs. Press your hands into your shins and feel that you're lengthening from your tailbone to the top of your head. Breathe out, bend your knees and bend your elbows. Breathing in, Press your hands on your shins. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, press your feet down. Soften or slightly bend your knees and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And breathing in, raise your hands, looking either straight ahead or up. Stretch your fingers out and then lower your hands. Lift and roll your shoulders. So bring your thumb, your, your, if you're right-handed, it will be your right hand, to arm's length and your thumb is up. Now you can keep your hand here, or if that's a lot, if you can remember roughly where that point is, that is the centre of a clock, you can now drop your hand. So using that imaginary point as a centre of your clock, keeping your head still, Raise your eyes upwards to 12 o'clock. Bring your head to the centre and then lower your eyes to 6 o'clock. Remember it's the eyes, not so much the head. Bring your eyes back to the centre and turn your eyes to your 9 o'clock. Come to the centre and then move your eyes to 3 o'clock and come to the centre. Bring your eyes to 10 past the hour. 
come through the center and then go to 22 the hour. Come to the center. Then go to 10 to the hour. Come through the center and drop your eyes to 20 past. And come to the center. And then raise your eyes up to 12 o'clock and very slowly move and smoothly your eyes clockwise around the clock, going five, ten past, quarter past. And just notice, as I just did there, how easy it is for your head to turn to help your movement. And just notice where your eyes strain. So mine strain around 25 past and around 25 to. That's where I can really feel it. And when you get to 12, go the other way, anti-clockwise. So these are eye exercises. The eye is a muscle, like anything else in the body. And come to the centre. Now remember where that thumb was, and mentally look to where your thumb was. You can engage your thumb if you want to, that's easier. And then very slowly bring your thumb towards you. Stop when your focus goes fuzzy, readjust your eyes and then try a little bit more and stop when your thumb really goes fuzzy and then lower your hands. And now look beyond you as if you're looking into the distance and the invitation is to imagine a hill with lots of tiny people and you're peering to see who they are. It brings your eyes from short focus to long focus so that's Again, altering the focus of your eye. Bring your eyes back to the center and then rock your hands. This energizes the nadi points in your um, palms. And just place your hands over your eyes, opening your eyes into the darkness of your hands. It creates an electrical energy which is very soothing for the eyes. It's called palming. And then just smoothly take your hands away from your eyes and drop your hands. Take the flats of your fingers and just very gently massage around your temple. It can be a gentle clockwise or anti-clockwise. You will naturally choose one direction. So the temple again tunes into the eyes. If you drop your hands down in front of your ears, just pressing there, and then drop your hands a little bit lower behind the ears, almost at the jawline here. This is the eyes again, but also you're moving into the ear. So it's just very helpful for keeping our ears, our ear canals, they're complex. It's helpful for the ears. And then if you want to, you can just move your flats of your fingers behind the ears and just press in or circle and then at the top of your ears if you follow your eyes temples and it goes to the top of the ears just above the top of the ears if you were wearing a hat there's a dent in your skull either side and you can just press in there that's your actual hearing um, acupressure point you can press in you can uh, circle your hands but the sound is amplified in your head you just feel your hair crunching around, so you might just want to press your hands in and release, and then press the flats of your palms in and release, and press the palms in and release. And then another very interesting point is at the nape of the neck, where the hair joins the neck, you can just use the flats of your palms, relax your neck and just press with your fingers circling or pressing as the neck, it's where the skull kind of joins to the, joins on, it's just a very, very major point and it can be very releasing for pressure, which is helpful strangely for a lot of things in the head, including hearing and sight. And then releasing your hands, take the backs of your thumbs and just very gently smooth them, starting at the centre of your forehead, across your forehead, coming off at the almost above the temples. Smoothing again. Your head might slightly drop, chin to chest slightly as you do that. 
These um, movements, are you'll find them in Ayurveda, which is the medicine side of yoga, but you'll also find them in the Himalayan Institute. For um, each um, point that we're going across connects into the major points of the body. So dropping your thumbs down here to either side of your nose, just very, very gently smooth across your cheek, out to the temples and the ears. So in the in Indian head massage and face massage, you've got acupressure points or marma points in Ayurveda, and a lot of them are covered in the central part of the face. You've got little dents, little tiny dents all over the place, and you'll probably never notice them. And then just very, very gently drop your thumbs down to your lips and just smooth along your lips and along the jaw up to the ear line. It's a freestyle, wherever feels nice. We carry a lot of tension in our jaw, so that's quite important to just do that. And then just releasing the hands, lifting and rolling the shoulders. And come to feet hip width apart, sway gently from side to side. Again, we did this the other day, yesterday. It tunes into um, moving all our energy. And illness is defined as a stagnating energy. So this is moving everything through our bodies. And feel that you're moving or initiating the movement from your navel. So you can lift your heel off the ground, but just feel you're initiating the movement from your navel. And then come to gently the centre. You might want to just bring your feet back to hip width apart. That's a free choice, but whatever suits you. Lift and roll your shoulders. And then bring your thumbs together. Raise your hands up and just very gently sway from side to side. You can keep a bend in your elbows if you want to. So this um, is a very healing um, pose. It um, gives the body strength as you press your feet into the ground, but also fluidity as you're just moving from side to side. And again, it's very good, strangely, for pain um, because it activates the vata um, dosha in Ayurveda. So just then gently come to the center and lower your hands and lift and roll your shoulders. So circling your wrists as you go up to however high you want to and stretch your fingers out and then circling your hands down and opening your hands, stretching them out. Very good for arthritis or if you're doing a lot of close work as you go up again Stretch out like sun rays and then just circle down. And last time as we circle the hands up. And circle them down. Take one foot, doesn't matter, you can hold on as well. Just lift your heel, I don't know if it's better if I do it, you can see like that, and just move your heel from side to side, and you'll notice that you're opening underneath the uh, foot where the toes join the foot. So you can circle your ankle as well, or circle it the other way. You're just giving your foot a slight workout, and then place the foot down. Find, or try and stretch your toes out, Put the big toe down and stretch a little toe out and then the other toes will go down. And just notice how different that is. You might have already stretched, then just relax and release back again. And then the same with the other uh, foot. Just lift the ankle off and the, just move around or rotate. And again, you're, when, under here, you're stretching the lung meridians, so you're boosting your immune system. And then just, but you're still keep retaining your balance. And 
then just very gently release back down again and we will start so breathing in so this becomes breathing in and then breathe out it becomes a yoga movement it becomes a breathwork movement and it becomes a meditation movement breathing in stretch and then when you're ready breathe out and then breathing in stretch your fingers press your feet down and then breathing out and then one last time breathing in stretching your hands up and then breathing Lift and roll your shoulders. And then very gently come to, in your own time, to kneeling. If you have a dodgy knee, then you can, uh, you've got a thick mat, but you can uh, use a support. Um, we're going to be kneeling up. It's very gentle, but it's just getting our pose. So your knees are hip width apart and you're kneeling up, if that's okay for you. So breathing in, raise your hands up, stretch your fingers, breathe out, start to round your back slightly and bring your hands to the ground and then walk your hands forward until your elbows come to the ground. Your bottom is slightly up. Then slide your hands back as you walk them back to your knees. Walk your hands up if you need to. And then breathing in, raising your hands up. Breathing out, bend your elbows. Bring your hands to the ground and walk your hands slightly up, outwards until your elbows come to the ground. Your bottom is up, your chin slightly tucks in to your chest, you're relaxing your head. Bring your hands back as you kneel up, stretching your hands up, stretch your fingers, and then breathing out once more. Bend, bring your hands to the ground, Walk your hands out in front of you and then come to rest on your elbows. Your bottom comes up. You're encouraging here the breath to come into your back. So very, and you're forward, so it's a very good um, de-stressor. Press your hands down as you walk your hands back, kneeling up again, stretching your arms up. And we'll make this next one the last time as we bend our elbows, bringing the hands to the ground, walking the hands forward until we can get our elbows on the ground and the bottom comes up. Just stay here for an in and an out breath and just note how your back can relax into this posture. And then come to walk your hands back. And we're going to take a couple of breaths lying on our backs. So traditional yoga, or this particular um, type of yoga, invites you to move and then it also invites you to take a couple of breaths that allows the body to recover and to absorb the movement into our bodies. So we're just going to come to a couple of um, breaths lying and then we're going to stay lying for a little while. So come to lying and come to a Shavasana pose, which is feet are relaxed outwards and your hands classically would be palms turned upwards and away from you, but you can bring your palms to the abdomen and the elbows out if that's better for you. So we're taking an in and an out breath, but here, even lying, I'm just going to invite you to extend your heels away from you and your toes point upwards. 
and then point your toes away from you and so stretch the back of your feet and this activates your lymph system in reflexology and as Sue pointed out yesterday, if you stretch your toes out, you're activating your sinuses and then just release your feet. And once more, extend your heels, toes upwards, breathing out, toes point away from you. Careful not to get, give yourself cramp and then just stretch your toes out. And then once more, toes up. Point your toes away from you, stretch your toes out, and relax your feet. And then circle your ankles a couple of times in one direction. And then circle your ankles a couple of times in the other direction. And then relax. And then just very gently let your head roll to or move to one side. Your eyes can be anywhere. They can be looking up or you can close them or they can look wherever they fall. Bring your head back to center and very gently turn and move your head to the other side. And come to the center. Bend both knees and hug one knee into the chest and then the other knee into the chest. So this is very soothing for the lower back. And just gently hugging the knees into the chest, rock from side to side, massaging across the lower back and the upper sacral area. So even in this simple movement, there are variations. Depending on how tightly you hug your knees into your chest, will determine where exactly on your back you are massaging. So you can find your sweet spot. And the other point that I made recently was that it's very comforting to hug the knees into the chest, and that's fine. Um, classically, you're supposed to gently hold your knees so that your fingers are pointing down and your abdomen is doing the work of engaging your core um, in. That's harder work. So this is a very gentle class today. And so you do whatever you feel is right for you. Come to the center, hugging the knees into the chest. And as you next breathe in, raise both soles of the feet to the ceiling and raise your arms up. They can be bent at the elbows and behind you. The hands can touch the back of the floor, the back of the hands can touch the floor. Breathing out, start breath out, and then bring your hands back, hugging your knees into the chest once more. And just take a moment to recover and just rock from side to side. And then we're going to repeat that as you breathe in, soles of the feet go to the ceiling. Extend your heels and the arms go up and behind you. Your chin should tuck in and your elbows can be bent. Breathing out and then bend your knees into your chest. And hug your knees however you want to hug them. Sometimes quite satisfying to just hug them in. And then in breathing in, again, soles of the feet extend up to the ceiling. And then breathing out, hug your knees into your chest. And we'll repeat again. Knees um, extend, soles of the feet go up to the ceiling, stretch behind you. By the way, stretching your open under your arms um, is boosting your immune system, your lymph system under your arms, breathing out. Hug your knees into your chest, and if anything is too strong, then don't stretch out as much. Just keep your elbows really bent. Inhaling one last time as your heels go up to the ceiling, hands go up behind you, and then breathing out, hug your knees into your chest. And just once more, rock from side to side. 
and then drop your hands onto your thighs to support you as you place one foot and then the other foot back down onto the mat. And you can either rest your hands on your abdomen, which means that your elbows are out to the side, or you can carry on opening your hands outwards like a book. It opens you under the, again, the arms and it's your lymph system, but however suits you. Your feet you might like to make slightly wider and hip width apart and begin to sway your knees from side to side, both knees travelling the same direction. You can also place your palms down as well, if that helps. You're certainly open under your arms. So you'll find that as you drop your knees in this position that you really are massaging over the top of each bottom and there is a major acupressure point you can sometimes um, have tennis balls underneath that and it really gets into a point um, that's deeply satisfying at the top of the bottom. It's like a little dent. So then very, very gently you can carry on doing this. And you can also engage your um, neck so that as the knees drop to one direction, your head op um, optionally can turn away from your knees. Knees and head come back to center, and then knees drop to the other side, and your head turns away from your knees. And do that a couple of times. You really are very supportive with your spine on the floor, and yet you're boosting your um, movement, um, but very safely. And then come to bring your knees back upright to centre. You can bring your feet in a little bit. Bring your arms in and place your hands, palms down, alongside you. And then hug your knees into your chest. And holding underneath your thighs, you can clasp your hands. Just bring your soles of your feet to the ceiling and just wave your legs from side to side. Now, if you've got quite a strong core, you can place your hands, palms down on the floor to, alongside you to support you, but it's an option, or you can carry on hugging your knees into your chest. So this is an inversion, and one of the points or purposes of an inversion, apart from a total rest for your legs, is to rebalance your glandular or endocrine system that you would need to stay here for a little bit longer than we're going to do today. But if this becomes too much for you, um, or an alternative is just to put your legs up the wall, and that's really, really helpful for rebalancing everything. But wherever you are, bend your knees and bring your feet back to the mat so that your feet are hip width apart. Your palms are down and pressing into the floor beside you. And we'll just start a very gentle pelvic tilt. So flattening your back as if you're going to lift your bottom up and then releasing and relaxing. And pelvic tilt again. And then once more pelvic tilt. So this time, Press your feet into the ground, press your palms into the ground, lift up your bottom, then lift up your arms, bending at the elbows behind you, your hands don't have to touch the ground behind you. Breathe out, lower your bottom, lower your hands, hug your knees into your chest, have the soles of the feet up to the ceiling now, so your legs are going to be in a V. And bring your palms together through that V. You can either now take one hand to support you behind the neck and the head to lift up your head as you breathe out. Or if you're very strong in your core, you can just keep your hands together and lift your head up. Bringing your head back to the ground, whichever option you chose. Hug your knees into your chest. And then we place the feet once more back onto the ground. 
hands, palms down. Just sway your knees from side to side. And then just we'll do this once more by pressing the feet into the ground, lifting the bottom, lifting the arms, bent at the elbows upwards, chin tucks down. Breathing out, lower the arms and lower the bottom back down to the ground. Hug your knees into your chest. And then choose as you extend the soles of the feet to the ceiling in a V, extend your heels. Whether as you bring your hands through, palms touching the legs, whether you want to lift your head straight up or whether I'm going to drop my right hand behind me to support my head and neck and use that to help my head come up. Feel the abdominal muscles engage as you do this. Whichever option you've chosen, bring your head back, hug your knees into your chest. And then this is a choice. I'm a happy baby, um, which is the stronger version, um, where you bring your hands underneath your soles of your feet and rock from side to side. If this is too much, then just hold your ankles and just rock from side to side. So this is opening the hips. But classically, you would put your hands under the soles of the feet, but that's stronger. Your knees are aiming down towards the floor. But whichever option you've got, do feel you can hold your shins. Again, you can lift your spine, your tailbone right off the floor, or you can consciously think about lowering the tailbone fractionally towards the floor. So the classic yoga invites you to engage your core to slightly to lower your spine, your little tailbone up a millimetre to the floor. Um, but again, just freestyle, you do whatever you feel like doing. It's sometimes quite nice not to have to think about anything, you just rock from side to side. And then releasing that, bending the knees back into the chest again, and keep holding the knees into the chest. As you breathe in, your knee, hands are still holding your knees, and your knees travel away from you, releasing the abdomen. Breathe out, hug your knees into your chest, however you want to, either using your hands to pull the knees in, or your abdominal muscles. Breathing in, let your hands travel away from you. And you'll see that you're massaging along the length of your spine, around the lower back area, which is... Um, Again, uh, keying in, so you keep doing this, to um, pain releasing, because you're irritating, almost like being held up against pain, but you are ma massaging along, particularly the L4, L5 area of the back, that takes such a hammering in our everyday movement. Just keep on hugging the knees into the chest, and just releasing. Hugging the knees into the chest, and releasing, hugging the knees into the chest and releasing. You're encouraging the blood flow all the way along the lower back area. So this is really valuable to um, almost boost up your back, but it's a very safe movement because your back, your spine is being supported by the floor. So it's, it's really, really a safe movement to make. And you need blood flow going through, you need to boost up your circulation to keep your back healthy. And hugging in one more time. And then keeping both knees hugged in, raise your right leg and right arm up. You can raise your arm straight up or behind you. Breathing out, hug your right knee into your chest, hugging your knee. Hopefully your, your hand back. And then inhaling, raising your left leg and your left, left arm up. Your arm goes as high or as far behind you as you want to. If you extend your left heel, you'll feel the back of the leg um, muscles engage. Breathing out, hug the left knee into the chest. Breathing in again, right foot goes to the ceiling, right hand goes to wherever you want it, behind. Breathing out, hugging the right knee into the chest. Breathing in, left foot goes to the ceiling, left hand goes behind. Breathing out, hug into the chest. 
And last time each side, right side, arm up, foot extends. Breathing out, hugging the right knee in. And the left foot goes up, left arm behind. And breathing out, hugging into the chest. Once more, this time rock from side to side. Again, we're really focusing on the lower back here. And then come to the centre and your knees, start to circle your knees in the same direction. So you're almost massaging around the lower back area. It's like almost massaging around the 50 pence piece as you just massage across the central part of your sacrum and then reverse your massage the other way. And then supporting your legs by holding them under the thighs, place one foot and then the other foot onto the floor so that your knees are upright, your feet are hip width apart. And stretch your legs out along the ground. So extend your left heel and raise your right arm above you and stretch. Chin comes in and you'll feel a diagonal stretch across your body. Breathing out, lower your right arm and release and relax your left foot. And now extend your right heel as you raise your right arm, you can always keep your arm bent if that's too much under the arm. And feel that diagonal stretch across the body. It also is hip releasing as well. And then just release, breathe out and lower the left arm and just release and relax. And then come to take a couple of breaths, relaxing on the floor. Tense your toes, almost screw them up and then release and relax them. Tense your knees and release and relax. Tense your bottom, both sides and release and relax. Tense both legs, the whole leg and release and relax. Tense your fists and release and relax. Tense your whole arm up to your shoulder and release and relax. Lift your, physically lift your chest slightly up away from the mat and then consciously release and relax the chest back down to the mat. Consciously lift your shoulders up to your ears and then just as consciously as you breathe out, lower your shoulders away from your ears. And then just very gently turn your head to one side, bring it back to the centre and turn your head to the other side. Take a hand, doesn't matter which hand, and just trace your fingers across your forehead, above your temple, tracing them from one side to the other side, coming off and starting again at the same time. So we're just having a nod to the third eye, and the centre of the forehead, which is uh, where the third eye is situated behind there, it connects into the pituitary and the uh, pineal glands, so part of your metabolic control. And then finally, to finish, take both hands and just very gently um, place both hands over your top of your head. It's your fontanelles, it's the crown chakra. And just very gently hold your head, slightly press down, make sure that your chin is not shooting up to the ceiling, the back of the neck is long. And then just very, very gently release your hands, coming back to relaxation. And now take a colour, any colour that resonates with you today, and imagine wrapping yourself in that colour like an auric egg, inside and out. You're totally protected from anything you don't want today by your auric egg. You're wrapped in a bubble of colour. And while you're in this bubble of colour, take a moment to take a wish for yourself for the day ahead. It can be for yourself or it can be for anybody. And mentally repeat that wish a couple of times. And then just release that image that you've got of yourself in your auric bubble. And know that your intention is set for the day. 
So you can either stay here relaxing and drifting off, or you can come to join me to finish the class. If you are doing that, then come to hug your knees into your chest, rocking once more from side to side. And you would roll to your right side, away from your heart, so it's less pressure for you to come up. And take your time to come gently to a seated position. Or the invitation is to stay where you are and relax. No hurry. You take your time. If you've joined me in sitting up, just bring your hands to um, your chest and take a bow for yourself. I'm going to gong the gong just to say thank you and note the end of the class.